North American's Los Angeles factory was considered to be vulnerable to Japanese bombing, and for much of the war it was cloaked with extensive skirts of camouflage, which not only disguised the buildings, but covered the outdoor run-up lines for the various marks being manufactured at the plant. Under these nets, the Mustangs were rolled out, tuned and tested. The Inglewood netting was to see the arrival of the next Mustang model, the D, with its teardrop canopy that made the Malcolm-designed hood redundant. This later variant of the D, seen on the Inglewood taxiway, includes the extended tail fin that was added to compensate for the loss of side area caused by the redesign. As could have been expected from a company with North American's reputation for manufacturing efficiency, the mass production of the P-51 was carried out in factories that were models of technical refinement. The superb organization and automation of the production lines enabled the delivery of over 9,000 Mustangs during 1944 alone. The company's success with its first fighter, together with its other designs like the B-25 Mitchell bomber, saw it produce more planes during the war than any other American manufacturer. 15,586 Mustangs alone were to be made. Completed, the planes were rolled out of the factory and were towed to the run-up lines to be readied for dispatch to the war. the P-51Ds swarmed into the theatre in large numbers to join the B and C Mustangs that were, to give an indication of their proliferation, already equipping eight groups of the 8th Air Force operating from Britain. They were the critical edge that supported the Allies' drive for air supremacy and maintained that dominance through to the end of the war in Europe. The Luftwaffe continued to throw its resources against the onslaught. In the face of the continued assault on the German cities and the increasing focus of the attacks onto the aviation industry plants and the fuel and transportation systems, the Nazi air arm had no option but to press its defence to the limit. But it costs in pilots and planes that could not be sustained. Though now acknowledged as the Allies' premier escort fighter, the Mustangs retained their old punch as ground attack aircraft and given that they were already deep over enemy territory escorting the bombers, it was logical to set them loose in ground-hugging high-speed attack on transport and Luftwaffe targets as they made their way back to their bases. On the 4th of March 1944, for the first time, Mustangs supported the bombers on the 1100-mile round trip to Berlin. 
This long-range capability of the Mustangs was, from then on, exploited routinely in penetration missions against the tottering Reich. In their activity in the European theatre, the Mustangs flew 213,873 sorties, with 4,950 German planes claimed as shot down and a further 4,131 destroyed on the ground. The aerial victories account for almost half the total claimed by all American units for the European theatre in the period after P-51 deployment. On the other side of the ledger, there were 2,520 Mustangs lost in combat, shot down, lost because of mechanical failure, or rarer but still a factor, lost because of pilot error. In this sequence, which we have slowed to quarter speed, the combat cameraman has captured a pilot's mistake and we see the horrific result as two Mustangs on a ground attack sweep collide and plough into the ground. The P-51 outperformed all the piston-engined fighters which the Luftwaffe was able to deploy against it and was untroubled in maintaining its supremacy in the air until the emergence of the German jet and rocket fighters. Even against the ME-262, which Hitler had finally accepted as Germany's remaining trump card, the P-51 scored victories, normally by ambushing the jets at landing and takeoff, or by overwhelming them with sheer weight of numbers in the dogfights around the bomber groups. One to one, the Mustangs were totally mismatched against the jets, which were over 100 miles per hour faster than them. Fortunately for the Allies, the Nazi leadership had lacked the common sense to back the jets in their early development, and they were deployed too late in too small numbers to stalemate the decisive conflict in the air over Germany. Speedier still, but more eccentric and ultimately of far less use than the 262, was the ME-163 Comet rocket plane, popularly known as the Devil's Sled, which could reach nearly 600 miles per hour. The rockets were deployed at too early a stage of development and were extremely difficult and dangerous planes to fly. They could carry only limited fuel and spent a large part of each flight unpowered, gliding back to base. before it ran out of thrust. For the pilots, taking off on a jettisonable trolley and then landing without power on a skid, the little rockets were a very demanding proposition. In addition, in its glide phase, it was susceptible to attack from the Allied fighters and unable to defend itself or take evasive action. 